Good evening, London! <laughs> Welcome to the first International Day of Remembrance for Victims of Hate Crime. And as we gather here today in the heart of London, crowds are also gathering in Brighton and in San Francisco, and people are marking this in homes across the world. My name is Sandy Toxvig. I am your host for this evening. I am uh, many things. Thank you. <laughs> I am many things. I am a writer. I am a broadcaster. I am the proud mum of three children who are here this evening. And I stand here as a proud out gay woman. <laughs> It was my great privilege this summer to chair an exhibition of gay icons at the National Portrait Gallery behind you. And it was on September the 25th, in the shadow of that exhibition, that Ian Bainham, minding his own business, walked across this square and was beaten until he died on October the 13th. Ian Bainham stood up for himself and tonight, we stand up for him. We have some fantastic support tonight. You're going to hear support from all of the political leaders, from the mayor's office, uh, and some wonderful music. Uh, we couldn't afford the speakers that we needed, so uh, on occasions I will ask you to be a little quieter so that we can hear the music coming from the other side of the square. I would also ask you please, these are the housekeeping notices, please will you put your rubbish in a bin if we leave litter all over the square, I'm afraid we're going to have to pay for it. Uh, candles, please come and lay them at the front of the stage, it would be wonderful to have a carpet of light here in the square to show that hate is never going to be allowed in the centre of London again. I know for myself that this is a very moving evening and some people may find it very distressing. To be upset tonight, to be tearful, I think is entirely normal. However, if you feel the need to speak to someone about how you're feeling, or how you've been affected. There are trained volunteers here tonight available. Go over here to this side of the stage. You'll see a, uh, a gallop passenger to the right of the stage as you're looking and uh, ask a steward to show you where to go. And uh, we will try and provide whatever support we can uh, for you. Um, please would you welcome uh, to start the proceedings uh, a gentleman uh, whose campaign is a silent revolution. Tomorrow you may know is same sex Saturday for holding hands and he is encouraging same-sex couples to do this everywhere. I think Sainsbury's is best. <laughs> Would you please welcome to the stage, along with the founder of 172430, Mark Healy, David Watkins. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> I have experienced hate crime in my life. I think there are many people in the square today that can say the same. It's fantastic that so many people have turned up tonight standing shoulder to shoulder to show that we continue to not tolerate hate crime. It's 10 years this year since the Stephen Lawrence inquiry shook up the criminal justice system. But I think the government can do more to train teachers in schools, to educate children, to come out of schools and live in a culturally diverse society. All of the perpetrators of the hate crimes against Ian Bainham, David Morley, Michael Causer, were teenagers. 
We know that schools could do more to tackle hate crime. We know that we also need help from the police. But what can you do? How can we fight hate crime together? In my opinion, it's all about visibility. As long as we're invisible, we don't exist. Hate crime is about fear of the unknown. A day in hand encourages you, where you can, to hold hands with the person you love. We need to see same-sex love on the streets of Britain. Until then, we all remain invisible. I like to hold hands at the supermarket. I choose to do it in the daytime because I feel safe. We don't advocate going down the high street at three o'clock in the morning when the bars are shut and holding hands with your partner. We ask people to think about more creative ways you can hold hands with the person that you love. In crowds, in the afternoon, giving your partner a peck on the cheek when they drive you to work, when you say goodbye. Live your love. <laughs> Only then can we change the cultural zeitgeist. We now have equal rights laws in place to protect us when things go wrong. But it's now our responsibility to change and shift the cultural zeitgeist, shift the hearts and minds of people in your community so that we can be proactive and stop things from going wrong in the first place. Tomorrow is the second same-sex hand-holding Saturday and I would ask you all to think about ways that you might be demonstrative of the, of the love that you have for your partner or your friends out in public. Thank you very much and thank you so much for coming tonight. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, this is my first time public speaking like this. Um, first of all I want to thank everybody for coming along. It really makes me proud as a gay man to see so many faces in this crowd. So welcome and uh, thank you for joining. Um, 172430, what does that stand for? It was set up basically, uh, this year was the 10th anniversary of the London bombing attacks on Brixton, Brick Lane and Soho. The three dates, the 17th, the 24th and the 30th. And I felt that we shouldn't let, allow these anniversaries to, to pass silently or quietly. We should actually come out and mark them uh, and, and make sure that we remember them uh, actively uh, within our communities. Because as, when we stop remembering uh, these events, we forget about them. And when we forget about them, they happen again. And that's, that's part of where, where 172430 comes from. The idea is simple, to bring people together, because when we come together, we share ideas, we network, we communicate, we build bridges. We had three communities to build, we've got three communities to build bridges with, and there are more communities as well. What many people don't know is that the fourth bomb that was being planned was for the Jewish community. David Copeland had a plan, he wanted to wreak a sort of anger and havoc within our communities and divide us. He failed and he's made us stronger. And that's why we're here tonight to say that we are stronger, we are united, we are gonna speak with one voice. We're gonna stand up to hate crime again and again and again until we put an end to hate crime. Um, there's, there's basically four, four aims of, of 1724. As I said, coming together. We also need to show support for the, the victims and their families, their friends, their lovers, the, uh, you know, all the people, every, every single person is part of a human family. When one person dies, it sends out a ripple through a whole community and we, which we're all connected to. And what we need to do is that when this happens, we need to show our love and support for those directly affected, make sure they're looked after and that they have the right facilities of support. And what I was shocked about was that at the 10th anniversary, there were people who were caught up in the original bombings who did not have people looking after them and supporting them during the anniversary. And what we did as an organization, we actually um, worked with people and took people to the uh, services in St. Anne's Square and held that and simple things like holding hands, pat on the back, an arm, a cuddle, um, just sometimes just listening and letting somebody cry. And that's what we can all do. We can all be there for these people. We need to make sure that proper support services are set up for long-term care. Um, 
it is about standing, uh, the third aim is standing united against hate crime, making sure that we get the message across to the media and to the world. And finally, it's about developing our communities. For a long time, I feel there's been a hole in our community in the sense that it's all been focused on the scene rather than building the community. And we really need to balance this out. It's not just about money over bars. It's about looking after the new people coming out. And part of the problem is there's a lot of people who've joined our community who weren't there 10, 20 years ago, who didn't experience what we, what we um, experienced when we were fighting against Section 28 and all the other, uh, other battles that we've had in the past. What we need to do is build the community, educate the new people coming in, and making sure that they have the knowledge and the power to take things forward. We really do need to empower the next generation because the best people to teach the young people is the young people themselves. One of the things I want to put forward is that all the NUS LGBT uh, com uh, groups within all the colleges, we should be raising funds to make sure that they have adequate resources so they can go out and spread the message. Um, and that's everything I've got to say. I do thank you for coming out today. Thank you very much. Thank you.